And when, when I heard the pitch, like, we still thought someone was still pranking it, but it made a lot of sense, and it was something that we were really excited with, um, and just excited about, because even from the, the jump, it was something that I would never have contemplated a political party to do. It's so bold, it's so different. And I asked that question to James as well, if you're willing to do this, we are so keen. Like, this, this could be really special. Um, and then we put a pitch together, uh, and we put a, 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 a pitch together for six episodes. That's what we saw to be the maximum amount of episodes. And we had a meeting with, uh, with the One Nation team as well, and they, they turned around and went, okay, cool, six episodes, great. How much for 20? Like, we really want to go here, like, let's go. And we've never experienced that before. We've got to remember, as a, as a small production company, as an animation studio, we're kind of bartering with people over a $3,000 video at this point, like a, a, a 60 second video, and they're like, we're not sure if we're really ready. Uh, to hear that was, was, was game changing for our business as well, but um, we were exceptionally pumped. And for that first season that we had, please explain, One Nation were our only client. Um, so we got to work on it 100% um, of the time. What I am interested in, no, no. How did that phone call go with you, boy? What, how, what was your first experience? When did you first hear about it? Well, James rang me and said he had this great idea and he said, and explained it where he saw this funny episode and he said, I'm going to get in touch with the boys and I'm going to have a talk with them about it. And he said, how do you feel about it? And I said, I think I'll just see, we'll, we'll see what comes of it. Um, I don't think I, I don't see these episodes till they come out. I do the voiceovers. That's all I know. It's not a service. I have no idea what they do to me, what the episodes are. I see it when you see it. So I've got to have trust and faith in all these guys. Cut the cartoons and some say, shit, James, what the hell did you do? I've never got this credibility I thought I had, and you just put it down the toilet in one episode. But anyway. That's interesting because what I got told was Paul is right behind this. <laughs> Could not be more supportive of this cartoon. It's her idea, actually. That was James' pitch to us. Um, but, but, but what was strange, I actually pitched it to Pauline as we've really got to engage with that 18 to 35 year old audience. I'm looking out of here. None of you fit that. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. What is established, what is clearly established is you're all young at heart. That's it. So, no, it, it appeals to such a broad audience. And that's, that's what really took me by surprise. I think what James said, 18 to 35, and we need to expose people there because they disengage from politics. They don't follow politics. The old generation, as we die off, I'm sorry, I'm giving up thing too. As we die off, and their brainwashing kids in the educational system mm. to one way of thinking that this is a way to get the message across. So, and you know, explaining politics, get an interest in politics, and that's what, that's mm. all so yes. the knowledge. Yes. 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 And one of, the other, one of the other things that we had to do throughout the series is we had to have a scene breaker. And there were, there were two people that I gave clear instructions to the boys. They were not allowed to lampoon. They had to pump their tyres up if they didn't do anything. One was George Christensen because we knew that George was coming across the One Nation from the Liberal Party. So I said to the boys, you can't go near George, I didn't tell him why. And the other's this man here. <laughs> there was never a chance that we could, because the man, you cannot, you cannot pick up Bob Carr. What do you think of your character, Bob? <laughs> I have here with me tonight the lady with the camera there. She is a cartoonist and editor of our paper up north, uh, one of our regional papers. And um, she is also a cartoonist. And um, she did the cartoon on me. And I said, look, let's face it, you haven't got the nose anywhere near big enough. <laughs> <laughs> but we had the uh, Viking ship attacking the porch, you know, and uh, he's attacking with a catapult. <laughs> 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 I'm going 
go any further. Move on, move on. Well, in fact, I actually saw Bob. Who watches The Simpsons? Have seen The Simpsons? Who, who remembers Groundsman Willie? Yes. Well, I said to the boys, <laughs> Bob has to be Groundsman Willie. Yes. Who's seen the photo of Bob on the railway track? Yes. With his guns out. I said, right, oh, we've got to give him a six pack, didn't we? Yeah. And it increased the temperature of the room in here by five degrees. <laughs> it's be unbelievable. But we actually had to pull back on the amount of times we used Bob as a punchline because he's just so much fun as a character. In real life as well, but as a character of the show. He's just so much fun. To be able to rip the shirt off, um, come in here and say something great. But he's, he's one of the friendly characters that we have in the show, which we actually don't have very many. Sometimes we, we, we do struggle to find uh, friendless. To be able to play with. Um, it's always, you know, we don't have a man, but there's just nothing wrong with it. Um, we can't get sense of him to speak even in our cartoon. Um, but anyway, so we should, what else, I don't know what's interesting for, for people to know about the cartoon as well, but. Well, I've got to tell you this, right? In, on the floor of Parliament, and I'm sitting there and we're talking to some of the members of Parliament and wait for the bells to ring and to vote. Um, the numbers that say they would love to be in the cartoons. So I said, you're kidding me, aren't you? Because said, no, no, I really want to get in the cartoons. And I said, you know, we put you in the cartoons, I'm going to take the piss out of you, don't you? And they still want to. And some of the ministers in the coalition, when this first started that, the ministers in the coalition, they were dearly wanting to be in the cartoons. So it's, um, it's a hit. I have not had one complaint from Jackie Lamb, or Willie Cathorpe, or, or um, Bill Matt Dave, none I had to actually have a go. I think they were as a badge of honour that they're actually in the cartoon, so no one's had a go at me about the You were telling me that um, Dave Popo loves his design. Pull it up. Look, it's, it's, it's not a very complimentary design for, for Dave Popo. He looks unwell. Um, these people are sick, but they love being in something where they're getting picked up. That's unbelievable. <laughs> it loves the relevance, but that blows my mind because we are seeing, um, you know, it, 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 it also surprised me. I got a phone call uh, from one of the, I'll just leave it at this. It was one of the uh, heads of one of the TV networks in the country. But this day, there. Um, it's really unpleasant. Put the bump on his head. It's not very nice. Yeah, it is a head injury. Yeah. yeah. But I, I got a phone call from somebody who, uh, one of the heads of the, the television companies here in, in the country, they happen to be at the front of the aircraft on the way down to Melbourne, and you wouldn't believe who they sat inside, Lydia Thorpe. <laughs> and who was travelling with her, actually, they got into the discussion about her character, and she loves her character. I don't know why. <laughs> so, they are sick. sick. There has to be an illness associated with the way we it's sit them. It's so shocking. It's unbelievable. Um, and for us, if, for us two anyway, we, we write a show uh, in the bottom floor of our house. Like, this is from a COVID time, because when we first started the COVID cartoons, we were still in the depths of Daddy Dan's uh, COVID lockdowns, really. Um, so we, we were in the bottom floor of our house. We've got 15 staff, but all of them are working remotely. They're all in their bedrooms, and we've, we've rented out the bottom floor of our house, which is maybe 100 square metres collectively, including the shed. Um, so for us, we're in Melbourne doing these cartoons every single week. We're writing whatever we want and then we're doing them together. And then apparently it's going to the floor of Parliament and people are enjoying them. And they're wanting to be in the cartoon desperately. And we're sitting there sort of rubbing our hands going, oh, they're gonna hate this. And apparently they're loving it. And it's very, very bizarre. Um, and we thought like, what, what can we share with you that um, you probably don't know already as well about the cartoon. So we thought we'd show um, a little bit of the process of, of what goes into the cartoon. Like I said, it is only the two of us. Anthony Albany, I'm yeah, not like giving any details or information about any of my policies, but let me tell you exactly how an episode of Please Explain gets made. <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. So we thought we'd make a little video anyway. We'll get Albo to get up there and, and explain just a little little bit of what the process is of, of the cartoon series. Let the boys bash away at a keyboard until they have a... We want to re rewind that. Yeah. Here, 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 here. Hi, it's me, Anthony Albanese. I might not like giving any details or information about any of my policies, but let me tell you exactly how 